Okay, it's recording. Oh. So I'm here with uh, one of my students and she asked a Hi. question <laughs> about um, yeah, how to progress and whether to follow a shamanic path or to join a mystery school. And um, it may seem like a very easy question to answer what spiritual paths I should follow. But unfortunately, everybody in every religion says, follow my path and we are the way. But there are actually several ways, several flows, which lead up to the heavens. Um, basically, there are four types of, um, of angelic hierarchies. And each angelic hierarchy leads the spirits and the souls and the deities connected to their hierarchy. Uh, there are also powers which are beyond all the hierarchies, such as the archangels, uh, the eons, the messiahs, who actually are able to transform or to work with various hierarchies at once. But for us ordinary mortals, this is generally not the case. Uh, the first hierarchy I want to talk about is what people most traditionally consider to be angels. It's basically uh, the hierarchy of spirits who have as their main uh, way of learning, of transforming themselves, to use their humility. Um, they try to be as empty and as pure as possible, so they may receive instruction or inspiration from higher beings, from higher worlds, and they trust the higher beings and higher worlds to guide them in the best way possible, so they will eventually ascend to the heavens. Um, every path has a light side and a dark side to it. So the light side to it is it is very egoless, it is very respectful, there's a lot of humility, uh, there's a willingness to sacrifice oneself uh, to a higher being, to a higher cause. Uh, the dark side of it is that you're in a way putting all responsibility outside of yourself, you're seeing yourself as a passive victim almost of higher power. Uh, you're not acknowledging your own worth, your own divinity. Mm -hmm. And um, also there can be a kind of a gullibility to follow any higher thing and then say like, well, I didn't know it was wrong. They told me to do it. So thereby in a way trying to avoid personal responsibility and personal karma. Do you think, may I ask a question? Yes. Do you think that um, in, in the tradition of some religions, think people like saints and such uh, that died sacrificing themselves, could they be, um, could they have come from that that uh, tradition or? Yes, yes, very much so. Jesus himself maybe even? Because he um, died on the cross or no? Yes, he was kind of beyond that. Beyond, beyond that, yes, okay. beyond a single tradition. Okay. But indeed many saints, uh, yeah, who have in a way, have shown this road and this path. Okay. Uh, it often also is a path which uh, appeals to people who have a very ascetic nature, mm -hmm. who feel that they are trapped by the lower energies, lower impulses, the body, uh, the mind, uh, lust, and they seek to, in a way, purify themselves mm -hmm. to become a vessel more capable of receiving the higher impulses. Okay. But ascetic people are uh, also physically on earth uh, a minority mm -hmm. and energetically it's very similar. There are not that many of these types of spiritual angels around compared to the other orders. Because I mean what happens too is they negate their own physicality which, you know, I mean we have physical bodies for a reason, yeah. don't we? Yeah. And I mean yeah. saying that rejecting your physical body it's almost saying I'm rejecting part of me which doesn't seem holistic. Yes, it's, it's, it's generally not a very holistic view. They really value higher energies more than lower energies. Okay. So there's a very strong bias there. Okay. And um, on one way it is, it is helpful to, to have a kind of a, a, a purity mm -hmm. because it helps to really view the higher worlds. Mm -hmm. But uh, in, in the light way it is a purity which is achieved through a process of control, of purification, of accepting the lower parts of your being mm -hmm. and gaining mastery over them. Mm -hmm. uh, in the negative, it is about, it's about judging uh, 
the physicality or your lust or your emotions to be wrong or pollution mm -hmm. and thereby in a way imprisoning them in yourself okay. instead of really transforming them. Okay. But ultimately this yeah, road will lead you upward quickly but if you haven't really built a solid foundation, you haven't transformed your shadow, your darkness, mm -hmm. you will be rejected into the higher by the higher worlds and fall down again. So it's a very temporary temporary result you get. Oh, I see. By having this rather harsh attitude towards yourself, mm -hmm. or towards Be others. Because whatever you don't accept, you don't get to work with, you don't get to transform, so in the end you're, you're governed by it in a strange yes. way. Yes, indeed. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, after this group of uh, angels, we come to the groups which are, at least in Christianity, considered the fallen uh, orders of angels. Um, the first order I would like to talk about has been named the Luciferical Order. It's named after Lucifer, um, the light bearer, the most light of all the angels. And um, his proposal uh, is that instead of being passive, like a sponge waiting for a drop to fall from the heavens, that we should be active. That we should be active in developing our own light, our own ability, our own understanding, our own consciousness, and by uh, growing and going from basically what we are as a human being, as a four-dimensional being, we can move in three dimensions and we're dragged along along the fourth in time, to become multi-dimensional beings who are able to work with energies, work with other dimensions, and thereby really live up to our potential. And the potential is basically limitless because after we fulfilled the complete human potential, we move on to higher forms. Mm -hmm. So we can eventually move into angels and beyond angels into even higher beings. So this is the luciferical path of self-improvement. Uh, the light side of it is of course that we, um, yeah, we focus on our own uh, development and thereby make a more rapid progression because all our energy is devoted to progress. Um, it has also as a light side the, the competition. We look at, uh, at other beings, see their capabilities and we try to equal them or even to surpass them. So we are inspired to even greater greatness by everything around us. Uh, the dark side of it can be that we go into this illusion of greatness by holding back others, by uh, sabotaging other people. So instead of improving ourselves, we decrease others and then get this illusion that we are better or we are moving ahead. Uh, another trap can be that we um, do this for more uh, egocentrical or egotistical reasons. Like I want to improve myself mm -hmm. and move forward in life. And thereby we can forget that we also have a duty or a role to play in our society. Mm -hmm. So it's ultimately a very individualistic path which we would be following. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned to me earlier, this was not on tape, that um, a lot of what's happening in the countries like the US right now is very much luciferic. Yes. And the individualistic mentality, I think maybe even, even something like capitalism is very luciferic, yes, isn't it? it? Is. Yes. Very yes. self-serve. I mean, it, it does serve others, but the, the main goal is to profit the individual. Yes. Okay, yeah. so it's kind of the opposite of the previous uh, hierarchy. No, it's like the previous hierarchy is also very involved in self-development. Right, okay. They believe that self-development comes out of obedience to a higher force. So mm. in a way the responsibility for self-development is relegated to the god or the goddess or the angel or the guide mm -hmm. who then has to guide us. And we are in a way the passive instrument which is perfected. So we are like a block of wood. Mm -hmm. which is shaped into a piece of art by higher forces, mm -hmm. if you follow the humanity path. Mm -hmm. And the Luciferical path is that we're both the wood and the carver. I see. So we shape ourselves into a, into a greater being. Well, it sounds a bit like... Uh, is it okay, by the way, me asking questions? Yes. Because maybe people... Yeah. Um, so something like the modern mystery school, where they say... Uh, I'm just trying to place sort of where it is on the scale. Where they say, um, you know, you, are per you were born perfect, a perfect light being, so what you're doing, multidimensional being, so what you're doing on this earth really is you're, you're just, get, you know, just coming closer to that 
you know, you're learning your lessons and you're, you're, you're here, you're on this earth, that's what they believe, that, that's what they told me, that they believe that, you know, you're on this earth to, uh, to just learn as much as you can, and it's through that process of having made the choice to be an earth, which is a very challenging place to be, where you learn some very difficult lessons, you learn and you progress, and then, you know, you, you come to the, to, way, to the way you, I mean, you already are, but you kind of re, re-enter that way of being in the end. Is, does that sound, but because they also talk about, um, you know, reshaping the world and helping other people and being a white, a light worker, they use those terms. Is that in line with the Luciferic um, Not very much so. line of thinking? Because, you know, it's funny because it doesn't sound like a very self-centered, I mean it does, but yet it doesn't. Yes. Um, because the, 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 the thing which is, which is really, really makes the difference between uh, Luciferical and the, the previous schools, really yeah. the, uh, the, the own volition, you follow your own will. Yes. And um, in a way it, it's also true. So we exist on, on many levels of, uh, of energy of, or of awareness. Mm -hmm. So part of us is already enlightened, part of us is already one with like the whole planet, Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. And uh, part of us is also one with certain deities like uh, love, war, art. Mm -hmm. um, but as we are now, we are kind of uh, blocked off from these higher parts of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And this is also because of uh, the restriction of time. Mm -hmm. um, in time, not everything, and in time and place, not everything can be manifested in the same place and time at, at one moment. Mm -hmm. So I can't be at peace and war and making art and doing everything at the same time. So I have to do it sequentially. Mm -hmm. And because of the sequential nature of the material universe, mm -hmm. we, in a way, choose to, in our incarnation process, to choose to work with a specific theme because we simply have, don't have the lifespan to manifest the totality of our beings. Mm -hmm. um, and different people have different keys to higher levels of their being, higher levels of inspiration right. in their lives. Uh, but the, the inspiration itself is, is a very tricky process mm -hmm. because on the one hand we have our, our spirit which is yeah, incarnating and it has a mission to even come to these yeah, levels of, of, mm -hmm. yeah, of the material world. Mm -hmm. And in its journeys through many incarnations through the material world, it also picks up experiences, tendencies, uh, habits which it will repeat. I see. Uh, the moment where we are born, the culture in which we are born, uh, astrological influences, they uh, give us certain energies we can work with, certain talents we can work with. Our mm -hmm. bloodline does the same. Mm -hmm. So we're in, a, in one way, um, it's, it's not that we can be like totally that high being. Mm -hmm. We have to, we are an approximation of that high being. Because like my bloodline, the culture I'm born in, the time I'm being is as good as I have available. <laughs> right. But it is, yeah, it's like you're in a supermarket and yeah, like depending on the amount of money you have, you may have more or less freedom to spend it or to get the product you want, but you have to choose out of the products which are on the shelf. Yeah, oh, that's a great, that's actually a great, yeah. great comparison. Because you are perfect, but but at, at the same time you are in a, in a physical body which does have its own limitations and um, and you do have your, there's a reason why you have certain challenges with your personality and your character and the things that you need to overcome. I mean, we're giving them, we're giving them for a reason. Yeah. Ultimately, uh, within within every um, uh, yeah, order, it is you try to prove yourself worthy mm -hmm. uh, to take on the uh, the tasks which are belonging to a higher order. Mm -hmm. And um, it's always true that um, the the spirit has to have the strength to to deal with the lower forces. Mm -hmm. So if we are stopped by our body, stopped by our emotions, stopped by our ego, mm -hmm. then yeah, we are yeah not yet ready for the next step. So you really have to spiritual progress is from the ground up. Mm -hmm. So first you have to, to learn how to deal with the lower forces, and then slowly but surely 
you can start to deal with higher and higher influences. Mm -hmm. And what often happens is people are rather greedy, rather focused on the cookie, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and say like, oh well, that would be a nice power to have, or yeah. a nice talent to possess, yeah. and life would be so much easier, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and they rush forward towards enlightenment, but mm -hmm. ultimately they have this weight or this anchor dragging them back down, mm -hmm. they don't fight it continuously. So you have, in a way, two ways of progress, you can progress basically by willpower, by effort, and push yourself onto a certain level and then you have to keep on working, practicing to keep yourself on that level. Mm -hmm. Or you can go for more slow progress and say like, well, first I have to experience like my body, my emotions, mm -hmm. and then like they will be there, but they, yeah, I can control them and they won't really do things I don't want them to do anymore. Mm -hmm. You can in a way tame your lower levels. Well, but also, is it true that once you sort of, um, I, I've experienced it, I'm not sure if it's true for everybody else, but once you've um, opened yourself up and you, you said to the, you know, to yourself and to the universe, so to speak, you said, you know, I'm, I'm ready now, I don't want to force it, but I want to follow the route, the way I was meant to follow before I incarnated in this body. I find that once you open, you truly open, so open yourself up to that, whatever, wh however fast it's going to be, you don't, you let go of that desire to control it. You just say, whatever is meant to happen, whatever I'm meant to experience, I'm open. I find that things start actually moving pretty fast. Yes. Yes. You know, it's the, the blocks don't seem to be there anymore. I mean, I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm saying those conscious, those blocks, the difficulties. You don't have to. Even when it's difficult, you still don't have to force yourself. You, you just follow it, and it happens for you. So it's not for those who, who think it's it's better to choose a faster path. It's actually not that slow, or no. it's just not following it. No, indeed, yeah. Because ultimately, what what you get is a very deep level of contentment. If your spirit is happy mm -hmm. with the way your life is turning out, then yeah, you often feel like okay, I'm content mm -hmm. with the way things are things are moving. So the Luciferic approach seems to be very goal oriented rather yes. than process oriented. Yes. yes. Okay. It's not necessarily so, but it, it well, tends to be. It, it tends yeah. to be so. Yes, they're often very focused on the light, on the higher levels they want to achieve, and um, the, the achievement of the higher level of awareness is indeed very much the goal they they strive for. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. So, um, from this yeah, original Luciferical group, uh, there's some side branches. Um, the first one are yeah, what are called the, the spirits of harmony, and um, we tend to know them more as, as nature spirits. Um, so they do believe that indeed we should have an active approach towards our spiritual progress, towards our spiritual growth. Um, they just don't believe that this active approach should be focused on our own individual selves. They believe that everything is here to learn and to grow and that the best thing we can do is for growth in general is to progress as a group, as a whole. So they're in a way saying like, I need to be able to help the beings around me and I need to develop the talents which I need to help the, to help the beings around me. And the beings around you include yourself. So you're mm -hmm. not saying like, I'm going to totally sacrifice myself for the greater good but you are included in the whole which needs to progress. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the light side of this is basically that you, you go into a very harmonious relationship with everybody and everything around you and uh, you serve them and they serve you and thereby also your own personal imperfections are not so much an issue which you need to fight with, which holds you back mm -hmm. but they can be compensated by others who, whose strengths in a way compensate your imperfections and your strengths can compensate their imperfections. Mm -hmm. And you only work, really focus on your own ability or your own imperfection when it is harmful for the group or necessary for the group to do so. Mm -hmm. So this, the progress along this path tends to be not quite as quick as the, uh, as the Luciferical path. But because you have a lot more support, more sense of community, Mm -hmm. uh, the falls and the traps tend not to be as intense either, so it's mm -hmm. slower progress but also less risk. Yeah. Um, so the, the positive side is really the harmony, mm -hmm. uh, the negative side can be that you um, 
can become a little bit parasitical or lazy in this path. Because mm -hmm. everything is willing to serve you or to help you, all the animals, all the plants, they're feeding you, they're healing you. And sometimes people are, get so comfortable, they don't really, they forget the need to progress. And oh, it becomes okay. pretty stale and pretty mm -hmm. stagnant. <laughs> and both in themselves and in their surroundings because they feel that perfection is already there because harmony is already there. Oh, okay. And they forget that everything has also has not just a physical purpose but also a spiritual purpose. So the plant is not there just to feed you but also it wants to develop its powers, it wants to grow, it wants to manifest more power. Mm -hmm. So its spirit can move into a higher form, a okay. complex form of being. Okay. So, um, would you say to those who are contemplating the choices, if your if your impulse um, is to help, or if you if your impulse is not to, to are yourself or uh, negating your physical aspects or whatever, but you just want to just really want to help, you just really want to help and just whatever is I'm talking from my own point of view now, but getting out what's in you and and finding the best application to the talents that you have, but do it. If you believe in that, you know, we're a huge puzzle or a huge tapestry and everything is interconnected and and you need, uh, you're not an island and you need others to survive but others need you to survive and you need to respect the, their right to be here and their right to learn their lessons but then you also expect to be respected in return. You just live in, as you said, in harmony. Is that the path maybe that they should be considering? Uh, yes, yes, I do believe so. Okay. If we look at the, at the, like, yeah, the past of humanity, mm -hmm. uh, most of the, the spirits incarnated in humans were of this type. Okay. So we tended to live in small communities which were very interdependent. So one person was the healer, the other was a great hunter, the other one knew which berries were poisonous. Mm -hmm. And they also lived in harmony with the animals and the plants and they asked like, okay, uh, we have these problems, can you heal us and can we help your spirit? Mm -hmm. Because spiritually we tend to have more complexity than many other forms around. Okay. But um, in a way we've moved away from this uh, model, if you will, of cooperating, cooperating with everything around us as on more or less uh, equal or consciousness, uh, conscious level into a more um, materialistic or mechanical approach. Mm -hmm. So instead of like listening to our intuition, listening to the other person's desires, we now have statistics and protocols which tell us what to do or how to act. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this way we become more a part of a biological machine which can be controlled and is governed by certain laws. Mm -hmm. But this is a very different approach to spirituality even and to ourselves. Um, and both are true. So mm -hmm. we are both a, a conscious being, mm -hmm. but we're also trapped in a mechanistical universe. And even mm -hmm. the energetical universe are also mechanistical in nature. Mm -hmm. and, um, the advantage of, of dealing with, uh, uh, with things as if they have a consciousness is that it's basically you can delegate. You can ask a spirit or a plant to heal you or to help you. And it will try to develop itself to accommodate to your wishes. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a it's a healing process for you, it's a learning process for the plant. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't require a lot of technique or involvement. And, but there's also a lack of control because you're dependent on the willingness of the plant to do that for you. There has to be a certain level of trust. But if you move into individuality, yeah. mm -hmm. then there is no trust because often the other person is seen as the competitor rather than right. somebody who helps us or who is there for us. Right. And it necessitates that we control the process of healing. Yeah. And um, in controlling this process of healing, we need uh, to develop um, a way that we can uh, first understand what we are, how this process is, uh, is, is going, how the process is working. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, yeah, taking control over our own lives, we learn, but we also make mistakes. Mm -hmm. So it's a riskier path, but it does lead to more understanding. And it's a path which currently, since most of humanity is now incarnating in, well, in a luciferical path, or luciferical spirits are inhabiting human forms. Mm -hmm. So the level of technology is increasing. 
Right. And ultimately, my personal hope is that both systems can coexist, work side by side. So we have uh, natural healing, we have homeopathic healing, we have herbal medicine, mm -hmm. as well as we have machines and operations and MRI scans. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a tendency for everybody to think that their way is best and the other way is wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yeah, this leads to often unnecessary competition between these two flows. Because different people, I feel, need and benefit more from a different system, mm -hmm. which is more in tune with their spirit or their way of developing themselves. So as a question, could your personality and the way you view the world um, be key to what your path should be? Because if you're, if you, in your in, intuitively, if in your heart you feel, look, you know, I don't want to cooperate, I don't really care about helping nature spirits grow. I honestly just want to focus on myself. And, um, and I say this without any judgment, I'm just saying, for, as you said, for some people that's the right way to go. Um, and, you know, this, or some people say, I want to negate everything the physical, I want to focus on my, um, and, you know, to others it may seem like a mistake, but for that person it makes sense. So people who are watching this now and thinking, so what should I do, could that be a key for them in a way to examine their, themselves? It's a very important key, but often we, we've already made that choice as a spirit. So it's what we're remembering and rather than yeah, trying to find way, something that we... Yeah, so you, you can ask yourself some questions, how you uh, would judge a situation or how you would look at a situation. Mm -hmm. So one of the examples I, I often use is, uh, like for instance, somebody steals my wallet. Mm -hmm. So if I'm in, in a phase of humility, it can be like, oh, well, if my wallet has been stolen, well, this is the will of God, yeah. that my wallet is taken and I should accept this and bear this and uh, see how this is guiding me, that uh, this is in, yeah, that this occurrence happened. Mm -hmm. um, if I view this from a Luciferical standpoint, it is like, well, somebody was smarter than me. I thought I would was keeping my money safe by putting mm -hmm. it in my pocket. But, okay, somebody second-guessed me and managed to steal it. So I was not aware enough or capable not enough. Right. My wallet was not protected enough. So next time I'm going to put it on a chain and put an alarm on it. Mm -hmm. If it is further than five meters away, it will squeal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, I will yeah improve in a way my awareness or my techniques so mm -hmm. the same thing doesn't happen to me. So they learn from the competition. Right. And from the point of harmony, it could be like, well, probably so the person... needed it more than I did. Yeah, that's what I always think. Yeah, they probably <laughs> needed it more than I did. So, well, that's a good thing that I made all this money. Or, or it's like, well, I lost this now. This means that something really great is coming my way. That often, often happens, actually. You lose something and then you find that something greater happens to you later. So it kind of equalizes things. Yeah. yeah, this is also another important thing that um, from the perspective of our bodies of our, and of our egos and our minds, we always strive for stability mm -hmm. because we, we always experience a level of stress in our bodies and in our minds if things change. So we want things to be the same always. Mm -hmm. But this also means that we never learn anything, our okay. spirit never grows. Because our spirit needs some kind of chaos and imbalance or dramas. Uh, to yeah, increase our awareness, to learn different ways of dealing with something. If you're really harmed by somebody else, you start to think, like, why did this happen to me? Why is this mm -hmm. person doing it? Why am I not protecting myself? Why am I suffering like this? Mm -hmm. This really deepens your understanding of your, yeah, of your own being. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's always good that, in a way, uh, a certain amount of chaos is in your life. Mm -hmm. because uh, from these challenges we can learn, but too much chaos. That yeah. means we are just so stressed out by just trying to survive and deal with everything. We don't have time to really integrate all the lessons. Yeah. And unfortunately, many people's lives in Western society are becoming so uh, full of yeah, chaos and stresses which are not actually part of our own processes. Mm -hmm. So because we become part of the machinery of society, mm -hmm. of the economy, of the, the, the company we work with, mm -hmm. we are presented with lots of lessons which are not very attuned to our own personal process. So it's very important to see uh, which is my lesson mm -hmm. for me personally to do something with and mm -hmm. which is just something which is random noise passing through my life. 
So the idea of uh, listening to your own rhythm, to to it's which can be extremely difficult when when we grow up in such a hectic environment. But the idea of listening to your own inner voice, not just the voice, but sort of figuring out what your way of being is versus what the what this material world's way of imposing on you is. What kind of view would that be? Would that be the more um, harmony way of looking at things, or is it even anything? I think it's true for all the paths. Um, the, I think the important thing here is to um, to really to uh, to if you know the paths of your spirit, then you can also recognize what is a lesson and what isn't a lesson. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, if you are uh, on the path of, of humility, um, you can see that like lower things are happening in your lives, like but since they're not from a higher source, they are meaningless to you. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, if I'm on this, on this path and, I don't know, I stub my toe and my, my, my foot is hurting, mm -hmm. then I can see, well, this is just the body, and, yeah, it is not a higher impulse, so I right. can kind of ignore this mm -hmm. and move on in the direction I'm taking. Right. And for the, the, the persons in, in the spiritual path, it's often the, the challenge or the competition or the desire like if you see something somebody else can do or has and you feel a desire towards that, mm -hmm. this is usually an impulse for like, okay, I want to be able to do that too. Mm -hmm. And the other person's capabilities inspire you to, uh, to rise up to that level, mm -hmm. rise to the challenge. Mm -hmm. um, for the persons who have a, a sense of harmony, it is not often Truthfully, not their own personal sensations which they, which prompt them to, to grow, but it's rather the uh, the getting stuck of themselves or others. If they see there is no movement, mm -hmm. uh, or the blockages are too big or too high, mm -hmm. then they often feel that they should rise to the occasion to get life flowing again. Right. Okay. So it's really the stagnation which prompts them into action to spiritual development. Okay. Excellent. So I want to go into um, the last group. Yeah. Uh, the last group are often considered uh, the dark angels. Um, this is also a, a splinter group, if you will, of the of the Luciferical flow. And um, these beings follow a very risky path, which can go either very quickly up or very quickly downwards. Um, they believe in their own uh, power, their own divinity, which we discussed earlier, that we are, in a way, perfect beings already. And they say that what, in a way, the higher beings do, or which God does, is taking care of everything, of the whole of creation. And they feel that it is their uh, duty, or their way of spiritual development, to take care of as much as possible. So they don't do so out of a, a sense of equality, as the spirits of harmony do, mm -hmm. but more from a hierarchical perspective. Like I have realized more, understood more, mastered more complexity, mm -hmm. so therefore I should take care of the others, and by doing so I learn about the whole universe. And eventually I can take care of the whole universe and thereby grow into a god or an angel. But it's more control than take, I mean, take care to me is very nurturing, whereas this doesn't sound very nurturing. That sounds more uh, like a puppeteer or, I mean, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be judgmental, I'm just saying, that sounds more like a chess player or somebody who's sort of moving the pieces around yeah. rather than is concerned for their in individual yeah, growth. Yes, yeah. and, and this is indeed a very thin line, okay. which is there on, on, this, on this path. Um, because um, ideally, it would indeed be that if you are a good caretaker, you take care of the beings in a good way, mm -hmm. then you are indeed promoted to take care of yeah, more and more beings mm -hmm. because of your capability of uh, indeed yeah, managing the larger and larger groups. Mm -hmm. um, the, the risk is that you become so attached, so enamored with your, your puppets or your, your chess pieces, mm -hmm. um, that you don't want to let go of the control and thereby you also stagnate yourself in your development and your growth. You don't move to higher dimensions but you keep stuck on a very physical level, for instance. If you um, look at a person who's, I don't know, a manager in a company or a politician or a leader of a country mm -hmm. 
um, ideally, we would say like, okay, I can take care of this group, and um, now I want to move onward in taking care of higher and higher beings or higher and higher levels. Mm -hmm. So instead of just taking care of them physically, which is the most basic level, make sure everybody has clothes and has food and a shelter, you start to take care of people emotionally, and you start to take care of people also on a mental level, and you start to guide their spiritual development, and then you start to work with their guides and their families and their interconnections with the world, and ultimately you start to work with the gods and goddesses and you become a priest or a priestess. So in this way you climb up the ladder of responsibility and taking care of the group on a higher and higher level. Mm -hmm. uh, this is in a, way, in a way a path of heavy responsibility, so it's a very difficult, heavy path to take, yeah. but it can progress you very quickly. But the risk is of course that you get stuck and become enamored with your power and control and you go deeper into more and more precise levels of control. You want to get ultimate dominance over the other person's thoughts or the other person's emotions instead of allowing their freedom, their equality, acting out of love and compassion. Mm -hmm. um, so often the risk is that, that control itself becomes a motivation mm -hmm. instead of spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. motivation. So the metaphorical path and the path of the, yeah, the dark angels is not necessarily a path which will, yeah, will lead you into bad things, but there, it is more risky to take than mm -hmm. the path of humility or the path of hunger. Okay, well, it sounds like they, 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 they require really a lot of... It's funny because they, they sound extremely ego-based, and yet for them to, to for a person not to fall into those pitfalls, it sounds like the person needs to, let, needs to let go of a lot of the ego. So it's kind of like a... It's really... It's a conflict right there, again, yeah. just to me. Yeah, this is often... This also has to do with basically the, the, the speed of progression. Okay. Um, there used to be, indeed, yeah, more mystery schools. Mm -hmm. And in the mystery schools, they're, they followed a, a tiered path of progression. Yes. So the first steps would be basically to, to work on controlling the body. Mm -hmm. And then also to bring the body into such a state of, of purity and good flow of life mm -hmm. force that it becomes able to transform the patterns it's caught up in. Right. So it's getting rid of, of the karma, of the habits, of the, of the judgments. And after this has been done, this purification process is done, then the spirit can really take control over the incarnation mm -hmm. because the lower levels have been purified and brought under control and then the spirit can say like, okay, what path should I follow? And it can do this quite safely. Mm -hmm. If we rush into a spiritual path while our own uh, bodies are not ready, while our energy bodies are not ready, while mm -hmm. we are not ready emotionally or indeed spiritually, we have not liberated ourselves from the strong influences of society, of the culture and time we live in, then our spirit is not free. Mm -hmm. And society and the people around us will dictate our past, and will dictate our actions instead of our spirit. Mm -hmm. So our spirit really needs to develop the strength and the capability to deal with all the forces coming out of society. Mm -hmm. This is also why, especially in the uh, yeah, in the intermediate steps of spiritual development, you often see people um, taking vows, uh, getting out of relationships, going into a monastery, separating themselves from society, mm -hmm. because they feel like I have not yet achieved mastery of my sexual desires or my desire to have a position in society. Mm -hmm. But and therefore, I cannot grow spiritually because these forces are still too strong for me to cope with. Mm -hmm. So they simplify the situation they're in. So because there is no person you're sexually attracted to, and there is no yeah, money or career, or there's equality, everybody wears the same uniforms, mm -hmm. um, those forces are not stimulated as much. And it's easier for the spirit to take control of, over your process of personal development. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, if your spirit has become strong enough, it has to re-enter society. Mm -hmm. Because it will have to learn those lessons eventually. Okay. So, so it's avoidance more than... So it is avoidance. Just giving yourself yes. time to kind of res rest and regroup, rather than yes. addressing the issue really. Yes, indeed. Okay. But it, it, yeah, it's sometimes necessary to really bring the... You should always have a challenge, which is 
yeah, and good for your level. Mm -hmm. If the challenges are too big, your spiritual growth stagnates. Right. And this simplification, yeah, is very good in the intermediate stages of, uh, of spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. But eventually, like the, the, the laws, if you will, or the vows of celibacy and being separate from society, um, yeah, they can be released again or given back again. Mm -hmm. uh, which is very different from breaking a vow. Right. So, uh, because sometimes people go into a monastery because they feel like, okay, I want to focus on my spirituality, but their desires are so strong to have money, to have control of their life, or to have intimate sexual relationships, mm -hmm. that these powers actually pull the person away from their spiritual path and they go into those sexual relationships. And then, in a way, the spirit has been conquered mm -hmm. by the lower forces. It's imprisoned by the lower forces, which mm -hmm. is very different from the spirit mastering those energies and saying like I don't need to have yeah this type of protection anymore. Mm -hmm. Because I can I can have <laughs> I can a sexual relationship and it can be a healthy one and I don't have to depend yes. on it. Yes. It's like so the, the sexual relationship is not no longer interfering with that spiritual right. development. Right. So, so it's, it's almost like having an addiction of some sort and trying to, 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 to conquer the addiction in a way. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's like a like a like a rehab center. Rehab where center. You you learn how how to deal with the substance which is always there. Um, one of them is indeed like like first step to to recognize that you are very strongly influenced by this. Mm -hmm. But um, rather than going into a, a lifelong absence or avoidance, mm -hmm. which still ha creates a kind of a tension, you're still fighting a part of yourself, mm -hmm. and this takes up a lot of energy. Right. This continuous fight, and ultimately, ideally, for your spiritual progression, you would want to have all your energies available for mm -hmm. the process. Mm -hmm. But it's it's really a ladder which you're climbing. So always the, the lowest rungs of the ladder. If you're talking, for instance, the the ladder of love, like at the lowest rungs, there's really the um, the instinct. So it's just hormone driven, like oh, it smells nice or. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, and the, yeah, for the men, the need to release their, their seed. Mm -hmm. um, on a slightly higher level, uh, there already comes an, an issue of, um, of, of higher stimulation, like I want to feel safe, I want to feel mm -hmm. nurtured, I want to feel supported. So then already it's not just, there's a higher level of right. becoming stimulated within that relationship. And on that higher level, you go into like, okay, do they sh do we share interests? Do we mm -hmm. enjoy doing activities together? Right. Because the activities which feel good to me, nurturing to me, the other person is helping me to go deeper into that, to be nurtured more mm -hmm. by our being together. And ultimately it becomes about the goals, like what do I want to achieve in life? What do I want to create in the world? What do I want to share of myself with the world? And mm -hmm. If they have similar goals, well, then you can use that synergy. Mm -hmm. And so slowly but surely we learn how to go into higher levels of relationships which ultimately become spiritual relationships mm -hmm. and they can have uh, all the lower elements as well. The spiritual relationship can have sexual elements, can have emotional elements, mm -hmm. uh, hobbies, uh, personal interest and also a spiritual path in common. But the spiritual relationship can also exist without Levels. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's, uh, that sounds like very much a. You sound like the proponent of the harmonious way of life, it sounds to me like. Is, Just for those is, who are watching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is the, the, the root I've, I've spent most of my incarnations in. This is indeed true. Okay. Yeah. So, and it sounds. Just again, for those who may be interested in the answer of the, the mystery school way, it sounds more like the either the Luciferic or the. And I'm, it sounds to some people it could be a bad connotation, so I, I, I don't like using that word. But you know, we don't mean it's bad. It's just it's just different, or the dark way. Because yes. that be is that although they do say that they are of light and that there's a hierarchy of light and um, to just as a question, um, whenever somebody says you know I I no longer have to struggle with an issue because now the hierarchy or the higher beings are taking care of it for me, what is your view on that? Is that, does it sound well, a bit like, like the yeah. rehab thing you talked about just now? Or? Well, the, the, the risk is that, that often uh, 
there's a risk of codependency. Okay. Like uh, a codependent relationship. Like you can't live with each other because you feel you're stifling each other's growth. Mm -hmm. But you can't be without each other because you need each other for support. Okay. And some people can get uh, a codependency relationship with, uh, yeah, with with other spirits. But in the, like the harmony way sounds like it could be that way too with the nature yes, spirits and. Yes. Yeah. So there's there's always uh, something to watch out for mm -hmm. because it's. I, I kind of like compared a little bit with uh, with uh, protection rackets by the mafia. So mm -hmm. like a nice spiritual growth you have there. Wouldn't like anything to happen to it, <laughs> would you? <laughs> so in a way, they are um, they are protecting you. They're making sure you can progress spiritually. Yeah. But you can only progress spiritually as long as you do things their way or you pay your dues to their to their goals. And that's very much so the mystery. So in a way, well, yeah. I, I, like this might be this mystery school. I haven't really visited them, but there are many different mystery schools okay. who, have, who follow different uh, angelic flows, mm -hmm. and some of them even combine various flows with each other. Mm -hmm. But it's very important to to watch out for this uh, for this codependency issue, because ultimately, then you have something which you like. You have this higher state of awareness. You're mm -hmm. afraid of losing it. Yes. And thereby you become beholden to the spirit who keeps you there or helps you to be there. Mm -hmm. Instead of like having really built it up for yourself from the ground up. Okay. And the, the, the tricky thing there is that um, um, if you're in, in a harmonic flow, um, you're very always very dependent on your surroundings. Mm -hmm. So there's always an interrelation if you, are, if you feel one with somebody else. Like one of my friends... Uh, said it very nicely. He said, "Like, how do you know if if you love somebody?" Um, it's actually a quote from Heinlein, mm -hmm. Robert Anson Heinlein. Uh, you know uh, if you love somebody if their happiness is a necessary condition for you to be happy as well. <laughs> it's a beautiful, yeah. actually, line. And, beautiful line. Yeah, and indeed, it is. It is a dependency, <laughs> and ultimately, you want to grow beyond that. Mm -hmm. Because on the path uh, towards enlightenment, um, you should get rid of all ideas of, of good and bad, or, or as much as possible. So anything which has an attraction to you, like happiness or love, mm -hmm. uh, can become an addiction. And that addiction may start to control you and mm -hmm. to divert your spirit from lessons you might want to learn. Mm -hmm. And um, the opposite is also true. Anything you, you judge as negative, uh, you have an aversion, and that aversion also, yeah, uh, doesn't allow you to move into areas which your spirit might find interesting to experience. But I mean, it's it sounds like this path could work for some. I mean, I know that a lot of people are happy on this path, and it could work for some people. It's just, I guess, more about being aware that. Um, it's like knowing, and this is, I guess, what you're the video is for now. Just knowing if you're getting into it, just know what you're getting into, because I don't think it, I don't think you're being told on the at the outset. Like going to a mystery school again. This is something I just observed. You know, um, yes, there's. I've observed that the people have they have a sense of almost euphoric well-being and a sense of. They say, oh, your power will increase a hundred times, which mm -hmm. is extremely attractive to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But I've also what kind of put me off a bit, and, and just, just for me personally, this may not be for everybody, of course. Some people may choose it and they'd be happy on it. But one, one thing that made me worried was that at, at the same time the person said, well, but, you know, I, I, I had all these other techniques, the shamanic techniques that I learned, and um, I observed a lot of imbalance there. There were people with egos, and it just it's um, it's the kind of path that can be very tricky. And if you haven't mastered your negative ego, you can make mistakes on it. So the hierarchy of light basically told me uh, there's going to be a time very soon when you're going to have to stop using those techniques. And you may say that oh, you know, I'm, I'm maybe I'm ego based. I don't know, but that kind of got my radar up a bit, and I thought. I don't want anybody telling me, <laughs> you know, I would like that to be my choice, but that's just my opinion. Not everybody has the same opinion I do. Yeah, and there's, um, I, I find that Buddhism has a very good uh, technique for testing. Mm -hmm. um, because basically, it, uh, in Buddhism they say that uh, Buddhism is, is more of an inclusive teaching rather than exclusive right. teaching. So they also accept teachings from other religions. Mm -hmm. And um, they say, Basically, it has to any teaching has to stand on four pillars. Uh, the first pillar has to be equality. 
Right. So if there is no um, equal value to you and to any anybody or anything else, um, then this is not the type of relationship to uh, to go into. It's not mm -hmm. a spiritual relationship. Um, the the second uh, step is uh, is freedom. So uh, in Buddhism, it's basically stated everybody has their own karma, has their own path to walk. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to be yeah, free to uh, to do so, to follow their own path, to work out their own karma, to learn the lessons which are essential to them. Uh, the next step or the next pillar is that of, uh, of love or harmony, connectedness. That you are in a in really not separate, you're connected, interconnected with the other person. Mm -hmm. Otherwise there cannot be a, a transfer of knowledge, of energy.